Hello everyone, it's David from Automotive Press. As you know, one of the most exciting things that's gonna happen next year is the all new sixth generation Toyota 4Runner. This is my current 4Runner that I own, but I like to talk about the future because the next generation 4Runner can be a very exciting car or vehicle indeed. So let me give you 25 things you need to know about the 2025 Toyota 4Runner. Let's go. Welcome back. So what is the 25 things I want to point out about the 2025 Toyota 4Runner? Well, the first thing you need to know is that uh, the V6 engine that we have right here, which is a proven engine, it's absolutely solid, it's smooth, maybe not the most fuel efficient, but it's always here and it's always going to last for a long time. This is not gonna be here for the new generation 4Runner. Everything that we know points to Toyota changing to a turbocharged four-cylinder engine, likely to be the 2.4 liter engine that is combined with a hybrid system or maybe for the regular 4Runner without a hybrid. Either way, I suspect the engine to be a 2.4 liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine with a hybrid that's sandwiched between the engine and the transmission for top-of-the-line TRD Pro model. Now, I am hearing some rumors from some of the forums that there could be a 2.7 liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine but I find that to be very strange because Toyota shouldn't or wouldn't normally organize and develop a 2.4, a 2.7, and then a 3.4. It just doesn't make sense to me. So I'm going to still stick with the story that it will be a 2.4 liter turbocharged engine on the new generation 4Runner. And we can say goodbye to the V6 engine, unfortunately. So that's the first thing I want to point out. The second thing is, would there be other engine options such as diesel, or maybe even a fully electric model or plug-in hybrid? Well, we don't know yet, obviously, but my guesstimate or my prediction is that you'll be a 2.4 liter turbocharged engine for the base model, 2.4 turbocharged with hybrid for the TRD Pro, or maybe even the Trail Hunter model, and that's it. I don't think we're going to get a plug-in hybrid or fully electric 4Runner for some years to come. So I think the only engine choices is going to be the 2.4 and the 2.4 with hybrid. The third thing you need to know is that I am very sure, even though it's nothing official from Toyota, that the manufacturing plant for the 4Runner will stay in Japan, which means that it should be continued to be produced at the Tahara factory in Japan. And that is perhaps the best factory in the world. It certainly is the best Toyota factory in Japan. So I'm excited that you'll continue to be produced there instead of moving to Mexico, which is what some people predicted. I don't think it's gonna to go to Mexico. It should stay in Japan. The fourth thing is the number of models that a Toyota might offer for the 4Runner. I think it'll stay about the same, which means there should still be SR, SR5, the Limited, the TRD Off-Road, the TRD Sport, and the TRD Pro. I think that will all stay for the new model and the new generation. But I also think Toyota will add a new Trail Hunter model on top of the TRD Pro. So that will become the flagship model for a true off-roader. And so there will be additional models, I think, for the new generation 4Runner. The fifth thing is that uh, 4Runner should remain as a body on the frame, because you know there's a frame underneath, but it will migrate to the new TNG F2 platform. The TNG F1 platform is for the bigger SUVs and trucks that include the Tundra, the Sequoia, and Land Cruiser, and the Lexus LX600. TNG F2 is a slightly smaller scale version, which will be for the new 4Runner, as well as the Land Cruiser Prado and also the upcoming Lexus GX. So we remain as a body on frame, truck-based SUV. The sixth prediction I have for 4Runner is that the tail lamp design, which right now is kind of blocky and a little bit vertical in design, will change. I think Toyota will move toward more of the Sequoia style or the Land Cruiser 300 series style, which is not sold here, and move to a horizontal tail lamp. Who knows, maybe they'll keep the blocky look like this, but I don't think so, because every Toyota model is moving to the horizontal line. So expect the sixth generation 4Runner to also move to more of a horizontal tail lamp design to go along with all of the other Toyota models. The seventh prediction is to do with the rear window here. Right now, people really like the fact that this rolls down and we lost that for the new Sequoia. The Sequoia now has a kind of flip top this way. And so I predict that Toyota will also drop the, uh, the window here and switch over to the flipping type for the rear windows. And I know that's a controversial one. None of you guys want that change, but due to cost reasons and for simplicity, 
That's what I think will happen for the new Forerunner. The ninth point is about the front design. No one has seen the actual Forerunner for the new generation yet, so we can only make some predictions. And I think it will begin to adopt some of the TNGAF platform design, which means that it will borrow design from the Tundra, as well as a new Tacoma. And so some of this classic look of the Forerunner will probably move away to traditional blocky looking, more truck looking look outside. So some of the grill design will change. Maybe this, this will become more square looking uh, with more uh, insert inside. And the headlight will also change because this is a very old fashioned design that looks kind of bulky and very awkward. It should be more slim and it should look a lot like the, the type of headlight we see right now in the new upcoming Tacoma. The tenth prediction is about the tire and the wheels. Right now, this is the limited edition, so I have the 20-inch wheels. All the other models have about 70-inch wheels and tires. I predict the new model will remain 70-inch for the TRD Off-Road, TRD Pros, and so forth, and then have the 20-inch for the 4Runner. But I'm thinking that maybe they will go one size bigger to just move up market because that's the trend right now within Toyota. So I suspect the new limited or potentially uh, maybe a higher trim model like uh, something like a Platinum, which is not offered right now, could have a 21 inch wheels and tires down the road. The 11th prediction is about the size of the 4Runner. I don't expect this to become much bigger just because it is already quite a large SUV. But as always, Toyota tries to make it a little bit bigger to increase the interior space so I expect the 6th generation 400 to grow a little bit in size in terms of the length. Maybe a little bit, a tiny amount in terms of width. And most likely it will be a little bit lowered because that's the trend currently in order to increase aerodynamic efficiency. So a little bit longer, maybe a little bit wider, a bit lower for the new generation model. The 12th thing I'm going to point out is the actual instrumentation for the driver. Right now it's a traditional gauges with a bit of a digital format in the middle. I fully suspect the new model to have a full digital 12 or 12.3 inches instrumentation so that all the information can be provided in different format for the driver. The 13th change I'm expecting is that the whole infotainment system has to change because this is again very outdated based on the old software and it's also super super small. The new one should be 14 inch, much like in Tundra, placed strategically right in the middle with a full touch panel and a much faster software to go along with the new system. That should all change for the new model. The 14th change is an important one and that is to do with the steering mechanism. Right now, this car along with the Lexus GX is still using the old hydraulic system which is actually a good way to get a feedback from the road but unfortunately like most cars it will move to electric power steering which is more efficient and will save gas even though we will likely lose that sensation of a road feel there's nothing we can do because almost every model sold in North America is electric power steering so new generation 4Runner should make the same switch as well. The 15th change is the rear seating area right now it's actually very comfortable and lots of room the seats move forward and backward and even recline, so it's almost like a limousine amount of space back here. But I expect the new one to possibly lose a little bit of space over here because they have to put the battery for the hybrid system in much the same way it happened for the Sequoia. Uh, so it's possible that even though the legroom might not change, we might lose a bit of a headroom here and potentially the seating height might change just because there has to be a battery that goes underneath the seating. The second thing change has to be the transmission. Right now, it's a horribly outdated five-gear transmission. It's six-speed on the Lexus GX, but still five gears in the 4Runner. That will change dramatically to potentially eight or nine speed, depending on whether it's a hybrid or non-hybrid. But the transmission will at least be six-speed, but more likely to be a nine-speed to go with the new engine. The 17th change I expect is the actual roof or sunroof on the top here. Right now we have a very small one that goes with the current model. That should change to the panorama type moonroof that we have in something like a Tundra. So it should be way bigger. It should open all the way uh, or at least have big uh, roof here that goes to most of the upper part of the ceiling. That will give you lots of uh, open air space. The 18th change is a headlight which should become full LED on all the models. The 19th change is a small and a minor change, but something I want to see happen. And that is the grab handle on the driver's side. We're missing that still. 
We do have it on the Lexus GX, we don't have it on the Foreigner, but they did add that for the new Tundra, so I fully expect Toyota to bring back the grab handle for the driver's side. The 20th change is to do with the material of the seat. Right now we actually have a full leather seat on the Limited model, but Toyota is moving to non-leather or soft text, they call it, for most of its models now because that's the politically right thing to do. So I expect to lose the leather seat for the new model and move to a full soft text or synthetic leather for the new model year. The 21st change I expect is to do with the suspension. Right now, the suspension is overly soft. It is good for off-roading, but on a regular uh, street in the city or on the highway, this car tends to lose composures quickly. So Toyota will have to recalibrate and to redesign the suspension for all of the versions of the 4Runner. So I expect them to change quite a bit in terms of suspension geometry, in terms of shocks, the spring design, all that, to make the vehicle more stable, as they have done for the new Sequoia, because the new Sequoia is far more stable than the old one in many ways. The 22nd thing to keep in mind is that some of the items inside that car will become fully digitized. That includes a rear view mirror, which is a manual version right now, but with almost all of the manufacturers moving to some form of a digital rear view mirror, I fully expect, at least on the top of the line model, to have a digital rear view mirror. On the other hand, I don't expect things like door handles or door mechanism to become fully digital as Lexus has done. So my 23rd thing I want to point out is that uh, a few things will remain traditional. These door handles will stay mechanical and expect even the external door handle to be a mechanical version, not like the one that we see in the Lexus, where this is stayed fixed and locks and unlocks electronically. I expect this to remain as a normal door handle. The 24th thing that will change for the new Forerunner is a safety system. Right now, the Forerunner has a pretty good set of uh, safety system, including adaptive cruise control and uh, brake mitigation and so forth. But it is still the older version. I fully expect the new Forerunner to adopt the newest Toyota system, which will be Toyota Safety Sense 3.0. So for example, it will detect pedestrians or bicyclists or even pets that's walking across the street and be able to stop the car in case of emergency. So the safety system should be upgraded quite a bit for the new model. The 25th and the last point I want to bring up to you about the next generation, 2025 Toyota 4Runner, is the design of the exterior. Right now, the 4Runner looks actually quite good and I really like it. It's aged well, but it does look outdated. I expect the new version to be more retro looking, more rugged, to compete with the likes of Ford Bronco and uh, Jeep Wrangler. So it should look a little bit more like a FJ Cruiser, I hope, rather than the current version. So it should have a beautiful design that carries some of the design theme from the retro and the older Toyotas because it needs to make a statement when the new model finally comes out. So I do like the current model design, but it is outdated, and therefore I very much look forward to the all new design and all new engineering underneath the 2025 Toyota 4Runner. I expect the new model to come out maybe a year from today, roughly in the spring or summer of 2024 calendar year, as a 2025 model year. So we're still looking at at least 12 months away but there's so much excitement to think about the 2025 sixth generation 4Runner because this is a beautiful model that deserves all the attention that it currently gets. And it's going to get even more attention when the new model comes out. What do you guys think of the 2025 4Runner? Are you excited? Are you sad to see this version go away because we're going to lose a V6 engine and so forth? Or are you the type of person who wants to buy the newest thing out there and therefore you just can't wait to get your hands on the new generation 4Runner. Well, for me, I love the current version, but I am also very excited about the new version and will definitely buy one when it finally goes for sale next year. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the current or the future 4Runner, or if you have any questions about the 4Runner, hopefully I can answer some of them through the comments below. If you haven't done so yet, would you kindly give me the thumbs up and subscribe because that would be truly appreciated. But until next video, I'm signing off for now. Thank you so much.